In this clip, we will try to understand what is called as chordal action in chain drives. You might remember the continuous clicking sound that you hear from your bicycle chain. That is because of chordal action. To understand chordal action, we are going to start with a belt drive. So here are two pulleys connected with this green belt going around them. And we are going to represent this drive with an equivalent mechanism, a four bar. The two bearings, the foundation, housing, etc., is uh, equivalent to this fixed link, link number one. This pulley is represented by link two, which is running from the center of the pulley to the point where the belt takes off tangentially. The second pulley is similarly represented by link four. And finally, the free length of the belt here between the two points of tangency is represented by this coupler or link 3. Let us now talk about the velocity ratio. Of course, it can be easily represented in terms of the two pulley radii. But since we have replaced the pulleys with this equivalent mechanism, we will talk in terms of this four bar and the instantaneous centers involved. The pins themselves, as we know, are the instantaneous centers 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4 and 1, 4. And using Kennedy's theorem, if we connect these two centers and extend that line and then connect these two centers and extend that line, the two intersect at instantaneous center 2, 4. Now, by definition, I2, 4 is a point who could be on link 2 or link 4, it will have the same velocity. So if it were a part of link 2, then its velocity will be given by its distance from the center of link 2 shown by this red distance here multiplied by omega 2. So omega 2 multiplied by this red distance. And its velocity as a part of link 4 would be its distance from the center of link 4, this distance shown in green here, multiplied by omega 4. So these two velocities are equal by definition and that gives us the expression for velocity ratio. Not only that, it also tells us a trick of keeping it constant. If we keep these distances the same, the velocity ratio will remain steady. So the trick is not to let this point move. If it moves, velocity ratio would vary. Let's now move on to a chain drive. In a chain drive, instead of pulleys, we have sprockets and as the chain wraps around them, they behave like polygons. Of course, they will have more teeth in practice. We have just shown five to exaggerate their effect. As the sprocket rotates, sometimes the chain will be taking off from the tip of the polygon or the vertex of the polygon and sometimes it will be taking off from the side of the polygon. In other words, the equivalent radius of the sprocket would vary from this in circle to this circumcircle. And therefore, a sprocket is equivalent to a pulsating pulley, a pulley whose size is continuously cyclically fluctuating like this. And mind you, this is going to happen on both the sprockets. So the effect is a drive something like this. So this is an equivalent belt drive. To get the velocity ratio, we use the four instantaneous centers. The two centers of the pulleys or the sprockets and the two points of tangencies. But the two points of tangencies would now be situated on this fluctuating circles and therefore there are two possible lines connecting them. This green line and the red line. Wherever these two intersect the lines of centers, we will locate the instantaneous center I24. And because it is going to vary between these two possible positions, the velocity ratio would also continuously and cyclically fluctuate. This is why a chain would be moving slower and faster in a cyclic manner, thereby its elements will clash together and make that clicking noise. All this happens because we have replaced the circle of a pulley by these chords forming a polygon. And therefore, this effect is called the chordal action. 